Christine Niles. Today's April 29th, 2022. Here are your latest church militant headlines. A Catholic podcaster may be under federal investigation for wire fraud. Emails recently obtained by church militant show Mike Parrott, owner of Restoring the Faith Media, asked for a financial kickback of donor money to pay for personal expenses. Parrott raised nearly $150,000 under the guise of investigating the case of Father James Jackson, arrested for child porn. But $55,000 of that money remains unaccounted for. Sent to a so-called investigator who was unlicensed, has no expertise in forensic computing, is refusing to respond to a subpoena, and recently filed for bankruptcy. In other fraud news, a man on trial in the Vatican claims Pope Francis was directly involved in the controversial purchase of a high-end property in London. On Wednesday, Tommaso Di Ruzza, former director at the Vatican's financial watchdog, testified that the pontiff told him he wanted direct control of the London property. Di Ruzza is accused of failing to block an unethical transaction, but he claims he didn't have the authority to block it. Bill Donahue is getting backlash for attacking Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. After the Georgia Congresswoman criticized the bishops during in, an interview with church militants Michael Boris, Donahue accused her of anti-Catholic bigotry. Greene, who left the faith over priest sex scandals, blasted back, accusing Donahue of protecting pederast bishops. Her supporters agree with tweets like this one from Matthew D. She'll apologize when your priests go to jail for molesting children. A federal court is essentially ending all legal challenges to Texas's heartbeat law. On Tuesday, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ordered the dismissal of all lawsuits, approximately 22, brought against what's called the private enforcement mechanism of the law. That mechanism allows private citizens to sue abortionists caught violating the ban awarding up to $10,000 to plaintiffs who successfully sue anyone performing or aiding in late-term abortions. In the UK, more evidence COVID shutdowns hurt children. A study published this week in the Royal Society Open Science Journal found school kids aged 11 to 15 were less satisfied with life after the lockdown and more likely to be depressed than kids surveyed shortly before the lockdown. It's just the latest in a growing body of evidence showing COVID measures inflicted serious psychological damage, especially on the young. A pro-abort Catholic politician is finally admitting her re-election is in jeopardy. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski said in an interview with the New York Times on Tuesday she might not win in November. She faces Trump-endorsed candidate Kelly Shibaka, who was passionately pro-life and leading Murkowski by nearly 20 points in the most recent polls. I'm Christine Niles. Those are your church militant headlines. Please watch The Vortex today, where Michael talks about Twitter and the parallel economy. God bless you.